Hey, what's up, everybody? So coming to you today with another What's Next, and this is on the newly crowned WBA uh, regular champion at 130 pounds, Roger Gutierrez. Gutierrez uh, came in on January 2nd and challenged uh, former challenged Rene Alvarado for the WBA regular belt and a rematch from their 2017 bout in which Alvarado took a close, um, uh, or took a seventh round TKO when apparently uh, Gutierrez was injured in the in that fight. So uh, now they came in fighting for the world title and Gutierrez fought the fight of his life. He used his height, he came in the underdog, he used his height and he um, scored two knockdowns, hurt Alvarado badly in the second round. It looked like he was about to finish him off. Alvarado though find, found himself and was able to really um, take over the fight in terms of action uh, towards the middle rounds. But, you know, Gutierrez kept himself in it. It was a close, hard-fought battle. And then in the 12th round, we didn't know it at the time, but it ended up being the deciding factor. Gutierrez scored another knockdown in the 12th on Alvarado. And that ended up winning him the fight on the scorecards because the judges came back with seven rounds of five in favor of Alvarado. It, and with the three knockdowns, Though seven rounds of five calculates to 115-113 if there's no knockdowns. With the three knockdowns that Gutierrez scored, that dropped uh, Alvarado scored a 112, and Gutierrez won 113 to 112 on all three scorecards. So by one point, that one knockdown was a deciding factor in the 12th. So big, big time win for Gutierrez. Upset as he becomes the new WBA regular champion at 130. So now the big question is, what's next for Roger Gutierrez? Well, in my opinion, his best option is the third fight with Alvarado. You know, you want to leave no doubt. It's a fight that can be made unless they try to put a mandatory status on um, on Gutierrez to defend his belt next. So, not sure if they do that. I really think there's a good chance a rematch happens here, a third fight. And I think a lot of people would be into it. It kicked off the year with a bang. Excuse me. And I think that's a fight that makes the most sense. So I'm going to say that I, I'm leaning towards that one. But let's run through the top 10 and see what Gutierrez has possibly as options. Start with undefeated Shakur Stevenson. I'm not seeing that Stevenson is lined up to fight for the WBO title against the winner of Frampton and Herring. I don't think he's going to cross over, especially to face somebody from another uh, promotion. So not seeing that one, even though I'd like to see it. Number nine is Tevin Farmer. Worst case scenario, I think this is possible. He's a regular champ. If Farmer can't land Joseph Diaz next, um, you know, in a rematch, then I think it's possible because these guys are both with the zone. Now, they're with different promotions, but they're both with the zone. It's an easier fight to make. And um, I think Gutierrez would like other options because Farmer has that kind of awkward southpaw style, but I wouldn't be surprised either. Number eight, WBO champion Jamel Herring. He's locked up next against Carl Frampton. I think he's going to beat Frampton, and then he would face Shakur Stevenson after that in a mandatory fight. So I don't think he's going to be looking at Gutierrez or be able to look Gutierrez's way. And um, it's kind of a bad matchup anyway, so I don't I don't see it. Um, now, we look down at number six, and that's Oscar Valdez, the undefeated former champ. He's a top rank. He's fighting Burchelt next, and I think he's going to get knocked out, so I don't see this as an option for Gutierrez. Um, number, he's not, what I say? He, yeah, he's number six. Number five is Carl Frampton. Frampton, if he loses a tough fight against um, Herring, maybe it's an option. I think he is going to lose, but I think Herring's going to going to beat him convincingly, and I think Frampton's probably going to throw in the towel after that on his career. Um, I don't think he's going to want to get back in there against a guy of, of uh, Gutierrez's uh, upset potential. So I'm going to say no to this one. Um, I don't think it happens. And if he beats uh, Harry, he's lined up for Shakur Stevenson anyway. So, yeah. And then um, number four is Leo Santa Cruz. No, this is Golden Boy working with uh, PBC. I don't see it. Um, and, you know, I'm not saying they wouldn't be into it, but I just don't see Santa Cruz coming back wanting a fight like that, and I don't see Gutierrez uh, being able to get a fight like that because of promotional issues. Um, number three is Joseph Diaz Jr., the IBF champ. This fight, I think, is very possible because Diaz, these guys are both with Golden Boy. 
and Diaz is, uh, if he beats Shavkat Rakimov and they're having trouble landing a bigger fight, um, I, you know, it's a unification bout. Now, Gutierrez holds a secondary world title, but he might hold the full version of that title soon because, um, you know, we don't know if Gervonta Davis is moving back up to 135. We got to see. Um, speaking of Gervonta Davis, he's tied for first. Um, I, I'm going to say no to this one, even though I, I wouldn't be surprised. I, I'm never surprised when the WBA orders a super champion to fight a regular champ. Um, but it's also PBC working with Golden Boy, so maybe they could get it done. I think Golden Boy would bend knowing that um, Davis is by far the A-side, so they might come to showtime, but I think there's other options, so I don't see it. And then the other number one is Miguel Burchelt uh, sitting at the top, the WBC champ. You know, Burchelt's lined up to fight uh, uh, Valdez next. I think he's going to knock him out and be looking at other bigger things, considering this guy holds a secondary version of the title in Gutierrez, and it's top rank working with the PBC, so I'm not seeing it. But I really think Gutierrez, that was the biggest one of his career. I think he I think he owes it to Alvarado to give him a, a rubber match, you know, to prove himself and and just being the right thing to do. Outside of that, I think Joseph Diaz is an option to unify belts if it falls into place. Maybe a Tevin Farmer. So we just got to wait and see, but I'm really hoping for that rematch with Alvarado. But that's it. That's the what's next on Roger Gutierrez, the new WBA regular champion at Super Featherweight. I hope you guys enjoyed it. True boxing, you've been hit with the truth.